Okay, so now we get to tides. Uh, we left off here last time. <clears throat> this is the last portion of this lecture um, that is tied with seasons and eclipses and so on. So we, we talk about tides. W what are tides? How are they caused? What causes them? Why do they happen? Let's discuss this. Tides are due to the differential force of the moon and the sun on the two sides of the Earth. <clears throat> So let's look at this picture, which will give us an idea what we mean by this. So basically what you're seeing here is that the moon is attracting the Earth with a gravitational force. Uh, since the near side of the Earth is closer to the moon, the force of attraction of the moon on the Earth on the near side is larger, you see. On the center of the Earth, it's not as large as this, and the moon's attraction on the Earth on the far side is less. You see, so they drew a vector here, a little bit less. This is medium, this is, uh, <clears throat> this is large. So we can give this some number just for the sake of argument. So let's say here is Earth, and here is moon. Let's say the moon attracts the near side of the Earth with a force of um, uh, 12 newtons. Of course, it's a lot larger than that, but I'm just using 12 newtons. A newton is a, a, a unit of force. It's actually going to be a lot, 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 lot larger than that, like thousands and thousands of newtons. But I'm just right now to not go into the actual numbers. I'm just making up a random number just to illustrate. So this is 12 newtons, okay? And then the center of the Earth the moon is attracting with a force of 10 newtons. And then the far side of the Earth the moon is attracting with a force of 8 newtons. So what effect will that have on the Earth? <clears throat> okay, in terms of tides. How does this cause tides? Well, what happens is that this side of the Earth is being pulled more than this side. So what I can do with respect to the reference frame of the Earth, I can take this vector and subtract it from this. Okay, so 12 minus 10, you have 2 newtons. And then I can take this vector, subtract it from here, 8 minus 10, you're going to have negative 2 newtons. So it's basically like having 2 newtons this way. So basically what ends up happening is this. Imagine someone, let's say the moon is on this side. Imagine someone, that person pulls me here with a force of 12, pulls my center, 10, and then my, uh, my other side with uh, 8. What's going to happen, one of the effects of that is that, of course, I'm going to be drawn to that person. I'm going to go towards that, okay? But besides that, I'm going to have a stretching effect, right? This side of me is going to be stretched more than the other side. So it's like a rubber band. So what's going to end up happening, the moon and the earth, one of the things that they do, they go around each other, right? We have the earth, we have the moon, the moon goes around the Earth. And of course, in the previous lecture, we learned it takes 27 days to go around the Earth. Why does the moon go around the Earth? Because of Earth's gravity on the moon. Okay? Does the Earth stand stationary, perfectly stationary? No. Earth, the moon's gravity on the Earth causes the Earth to also go in a little circle. But it's such a small, tiny circle. As the moon is doing this, Earth is doing, it's like wobbling. I can't even draw, it's such a small circle. It's like that. So the Earth is doing this. You see? So the moon is going like that, the Earth is doing this, going around the circle. So very, very tiny little circle. Why? Because the moon's gravity on the Earth is very, is the same as uh, uh, Earth's gravity on the moon, but the Earth is a lot heavier, you see? So the moon goes around the Earth, and the Earth does a little wobble, you see. How about the sun? The Earth goes around the sun, right? 
Does the sun wobble a little bit due to Earth's gravity on the sun? Oh, yeah. That's how we discover extrasolar planets, planets in other solar systems. We look at the wobble of the, uh, the star, and we know that a planet is going around it. So why does the Earth then do this wobble? Because of the 10 Newton force on its center, OK? The, the, the force on the center of the Earth causes the Earth to go a little bit in a small circle. So that's the first effect of the gravity of the moon on the Earth, is that it, it does a little wobble. The second effect is the tidal effect. Because, because this force is larger than this, 12 minus two, uh, 10 is 2, 8 minus 10 is negative 2, it pulls it like this. So what does that do? If you have a body of water on the Earth, this side of the Earth is going to have a low tide. This side of the Earth is going to have a high tide. Low tide, high tide. So which side has the high tide? The, the side of the Earth facing the moon and the side of the Earth opposite to the moon. Those two sides have high tides. These two sides. It's pulled like that, like a rubber band. These two sides have low tide, OK? So that's where tides are caused from. So when we say differential force, what did we mean? It's the difference of the force between the near side and the far side, OK? <coughs> so now let's go back to the. The moon's tidal force on the Earth is about twice the sun's tidal force. When people first learn about this, they're really, really surprised. Something sounds surprising about this fact. It seems to be saying the, moon, the moon's force on the Earth is twice the sun's force. Is that exactly what it's saying? No, it's not saying the moon's force on the Earth is twice the sun's force. It's saying the moon's tidal force is twice the sun's tidal force, OK? So what's going to happen? We can do a similar thing with the sun. Let me keep this picture here. So let's say this is the Earth now, and this is the sun. I'm just going to draw a huge sun. So the is the sun going to attract the Earth with a larger force than the moon? Of course it is, a lot larger force, not even comparable. If the moon's force on the Earth is 10 newtons, the sun's force on the Earth may be 1,000 newtons, 1,000. Okay, how about the, the force on the near side? How about the force on the far side? What is that going to be? Well, roughly speaking, it's going to be something like 1,000 uh, <coughs> 1, and 1 Newton. And then the force on the other side is going to be 999 Newton. OK, so is the force of the sun on the, uh, the Earth greater than the force of the moon on the Earth? Yes, based on this picture, the moon attracts the Earth 10 newtons. The sun attracts the Earth 1,000 newtons. So which one has a greater force on the Earth? The sun. But which one has the greater tidal force on the Earth? OK, if I subtract 1,001 minus 1,000, what do I get? 1,001 minus 1,000, uh, 1 Newton. If I subtract 999 minus 1,000, what do I get? Negative 1 pulling the other way. OK, so therefore, we would say the tidal force of the sun on the Earth is 1 Newton. The tidal force of the moon on the Earth is 2 Newtons, twice as strong. 
You see? So when it says the moon's tidal force is stronger, we don't mean the actual force is stronger. We mean the difference of the two sides is stronger. OK? Now, if I were to ask you, let me see who can come up with the answer. Why is this one only 1,001, 1,999? Why is it only one Newton larger than this, whereas with the moon, if the moon attracts this side with 10, the near side, it's two, lar two Newtons larger. Why is it making more, why is the force making more of a difference for the moon than the sun? Huh? Or what did you say? The range? Yeah, both of you got the right answer. The range between the Earth and the sun is uh, farther away than the Earth and the moon. And you said the moon is closer, correct answer. If, you, an, if an object is closer to another object, then its size matters more. The near side of the object is much closer to that object than the far side, you see? <coughs> so it's going to make more of a difference. Whereas we are farther away from the sun, the near side is not that much closer, and the far side is not that much farther, you see? So that's basically what's happening. When we, uh, later in the course, when we talk about uh, black holes, you will see that one of the things that would happen to you if you get sucked into the um, event horizon of a black hole, the tidal force on your body would be so large. The front side of your feet are going to be closer to the singularity of the black hole. The head of your, uh, the, your head is going to be a little bit farther away, right? And as you're falling, the, the legs will be pulled with a greater force than the head, and you will be stretched out like this. Okay, that's called sp spaghettification when you fall into a black hole. And you will be pulled, stretched, and then you will die like that. So you, there's no way you can survive the fall into a black hole. Why? Because of the tidal forces on you. Okay, so it's very similar to the moon's tidal force on the Earth. <coughs> okay. <coughs> this picture is showing a similar kind of effect here. You see here, yeah, so the moon is approach the, attracting the center. The near side is attracting greater, the far side less, all points like that. And then what they do here is uh, they subtract. To find the difference between force B and force A, D, and C, reverse arrow B and, green, and the green arrow in the force that remains. So what they t do is they take the middle force, the force on the center of the Earth, then they subtract it from every other vector, OK? And you will learn more about vectors if you take a physics class. You will get into the physics of this. And then you'll go over here. And then you'll see there's a stretch, there's a stretch, there's a stretch, there's a stretch, like that. So a tidal stretch, it's called, OK? <clears throat> now, what's going to happen because of the tidal forces on the Earth and the friction force between the Earth's spin and the, the body of water that it has, uh, the, eventually the Earth will start slowing down in its rotation rate. And it will be in synchronous rotation with the moon. Let's see why this happens. This picture is a good picture. It shows you. OK. So one of the things that's happening because of the tidal force the Earth also has a tidal force on the Moon, and the Moon has a tidal force on the Earth. It says here, the Earth is trying to rotate this way, and then the Moon is causing tidal force on the, the high tides and the high tide and the low and the low tide. So it says, Moon's gravitational attraction pulls Earth's tidal bulge backward, slowing Earth's rotation. So every year, the Earth's rotation, you know, now it rotates once every 24 hours, right? So 10 years later, it'll, it'll rotate 24 hours and, let's say, one minute. Ten, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years later, it'll rotate once every 28 hours, once every uh, 30 hours, once every 60 hours, and so on, you see? So its, its rotation is slowing down. And then it says here, gravitational attraction of Earth's tidal bulge pulls Moon ahead in its orbit. Then what's going to eventually happen is the Moon is going to start getting farther and farther away from the Earth due to this. So the moon is going to go farther apart, and the Earth is going to slow down. 
Well, if you think about it, just keep going into the millions and millions of years into the future, what's the effect of this? The effect of this is that only one side of the Earth will face the moon, and this is just a rough number, I'm, I, I haven't really ca ca calculated it, in million years, so it could be millions and millions and millions of years. So remember in the last lecture we learned that <coughs> only one side of the moon uh, faces the Earth, right? So we learned that, see, here's the Earth. It rotates once every 24 hours. And then the moon, and then we said if this is a lunar, some kind of lunar mountain, the moon always rotates so that that mountain is facing uh, the Earth. So right now, what's happening is the moon's rate of rotation is in sync with its rate of revolution. Moon, moon's rotation is in sync with its revolution. <coughs> so if you're on the moon, you have to live on this side in order to be able to see the Earth. But it, vice versa is not true. The, since the Earth is spinning really fast, you can be anywhere on the Earth and still see the moon, you see? But eventually that's not going to be the case. As the Earth slows down, slows down, slows down, and then what's going to happen? The, the Earth and the moon are going to be together in synchronous rotation. So it's going to be like this. You can only live on one side of the Earth to see the moon. You can only live on one side of the moon to see the Earth. It'll look like that, okay? It, right now it looks like this. And this thing rotates, you know, like that. So eventually as it slows down, it'll just go like that, you see? So eventually you'll go like this. And if you live here, you can see the moon and then it go like that. By the time the moon is over there, you're over here. So if the moon is ahead of you, is, is, is on top of you, it's always going to be on top of you. If you live over here and the moon is there, you're never going to see the moon. Because by the time the moon is there, you're going to be over here. You see? By the time the moon is there, you're going to be over here. So you're only going to be able to see the moon like directly overhead from one spot, you see? And, and the Earth is going to be in lockstep with the, the moon. Sometimes when we have theories like this, like things like this are going to happen. One of the ways we can prove this is by looking in outer space and seeing are there any other planets and moon that are in lockstep with each other? Only one side faces the other, only one side faces the other. If we can find evidence, then that justifies that it, it could happen on Earth. Have we found evidence of that? Yes, sure enough. Pluto and Sharon, it's moon are in lex lockstep with each other. You can only see Pluto from one side of Sharon. You can only see Sharon from one side of Pluto. Okay? They're in synchronous rotation with each other. So since it's happened to Pluto and Sharon, it's likely it will happen to Earth and the Moon. Okay? <coughs> so that's always a good way to prove things. Look to see if it's happened in to other systems.